Hey, <laughs> hello viewers. Another beautiful day. Yeah, hope your five senses work. Health and strength is good. Or excellent. What? What's up? What's up, Steam Deck fans? <laughs> oh, you, you 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 know you know you know you know I got some news for you, right? You you know I'm not gonna leave you out in the dark, right? Okay, okay, all right. Now, what I got for you, Steam Deck fans, man? You and that you and that crazy Steam Deck. Yeah, my my mine's is around here somewhere. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I probably left it left it out left it out in the living out in the living room somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what do I got? Let's see. Here, uh, no leaving Steam account in a, in a will after you die, according to Valve. <laughs> Doing the rounds right now is it is a post from Valve Steam setup. Thank thanks Ars. Uh, when a user asks about what would happen to their Steam account when they die, and it's not great news for anyone hoping to pass on your Steam account. It says this. This comes from a our reset error. Reset error, uh, where a user asks if a Steam account could be transferred via a will. The Steam support staff member applied to the note very clearly. Steam account are plain and simple. No non-transferable. Then it says uh, it's not exactly something new or surprising, given the Steam subscriber agreement clearly notes. You may not reveal, share, or otherwise allow others to use your password or account except for otherwise specifically authorized by Valve. Then it says, uh, still nothing actually technically stops you just writing down your details for someone and leaving it in a safe space. It's not like Valve actually go and confirm your identity. You will also have the newer family sharing uh, system. So someone could quickly go in and share it to your personal account and get most of the games. It's also another reminder that on Steam you don't own any games on it at all. Once again, as per the subscriber agreement, content and service uh, license not sold and your license are conferred no titles or ownership in the content and service. This will be the same across nearly all web stores that offer digital products you buy they, they're not yours. Epic Game Store is exactly the same as per their EULA, which notes all rights guarantee you to under this agreement are granted uh, by express license only, not by sales. Ubisoft are exactly the same in their terms as well, noting we grant you a non-exclusive, non-transferable, non-licensed commercials and personal license. Think GOG are any better? They're not. As per GOG agreement, your account and GOG content are personal to you and cannot be shared with, or sold, or gifted, or transferred to anyone else. And they make it clear multiple times you get a license again, not ownership of any uh, thing sold. So it's a digital copy versus physical copy again. Anyway, it says, if you go through most other places, they all use similar language. We're not talking just game stores here, but anywhere anywhere you digitally purchase movies, TVs, and so on, you get the idea. You might be buying the item, but you have no ownership at all. Digital copy versus physical. And it says here, really? The only time this will change is when physical media dot properly dies off and people cause enough of a uh, fuss that the government and legal bodies around the world put in laws ar around digital ownership, which is not likely for a long time. So you probably should go clear that backlog of games you built up. <laughs> well, it's a digital versus uh, physical argument. Yesterday I did a video about the Xbox One and how Microsoft was, they didn't want you to own the console and they were they were charging you for on and offline play but they gave you this little option to make it, to make you think that you were, off, give, gave, you an, gave you an offline option feature while you're online to make you, and, and, and they were saying that, oh, you can turn off the online and go offline. But you were never offline. You are still online with that feature. So because because offline really means that offline really means that 
no um if uh internet connection that are that are wireless that are wireless and are or that are wired offline means that you have no internet connections whatsoever uh wirelessly or cable that's what offline means so uh it's the same thing like uh, um it's, it's the same thing with this when it comes to physical versus digital media when you buy a digital game you don't physically own them look on xbox on the 360 i bought uh raiden uh raiden aces if you if if you know raiden aces uh strikers 1945 uh 19xx uh ikaruga uh what's another one um hero fighter <laughs> uh uh, ghost ghost pilot if you know those airplane shooters look I bought Raiden aces and then from the Microsoft store and then I came in one day to come play the game and then the game disappeared without a trace it was gone I went inside the Microsoft store looking for it it was gone that's what this is talking about so if you die I mean the games that you purchase it's for you if you die if you die then the game that you purchase it's for you it's not for someone else now you can have a family sharing account sure but those digital games that you buy it was person personally for you now if your family got now if your family got access to your account that means you still can um that mean that that mean they still can you they, they still can they still can they still can use it they still can use it as long as they don't mess it up you get the point <laughs> anyway all right now <clears throat> what's the next what's the next piece of news we got here uh let's see uh oh heroes of might and magic yeah um microsoft man um i bought raiden aces man i'm a big fan of uh, of, uh, of our shoot 'em ups airplane shooters and um you know 1945 gradius r type love those type of games and um uh, i bought raiden aces and I went in, came in one day to come play it, and the game was gone. And Microsoft didn't even like, you know what? Yeah, since 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 the, the the developers pulled the game down, we'll give you Raiden, we'll give you Raiden Four. Not even that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's a physical versus digital copy. So yeah, so physical copies will be around because, like I said, there's three different type of people in video. Like I told you guys before. There's three top. There's three types of uh, three type of gamers in video games. There's one they love physical copy. They don't want to have nothing to do with digital. Then you got another group of people. They're all digital copy. They don't care about the physical. And then you have the other other group of people now. They love both physical and digital. So digital physical copies will never go away. People people want their choices and they want their say so. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, let me keep going here. All right, here's another one for you. <laughs> so yeah, the the the, the, uh, the debate rages on there. <laughs> Physical versus digital. It says here, uh, okay, Heroes of Might and Magic uh, Two game engine, uh, uh, F Heroes Two version one dot one dot zero release. Yeah, Might and Magic is getting a lot of updates, man. Let's see, let's see what they're talking about here. Um. See if I can get it. Dear fans of Heroes of Might and Magic 2 and F Heroes Mike F Heroes 2 project our supporters, the team is excited to present to you the release of version 1.1.0, the second major release of F uh, Heroes engine. The release feature a significant update that we are thrilled to share with you. After after more than a, a year of work, the team has completed the f the first version of the in-game editor. The editor is available on all platform. is integrated into the game. You can access it by clicking on the canvas with a globe in the bottom right corner of the main menu. Editor works only with full version of the game. Uh, price of loyalty is not supported in the demo or the Succession War uh, version. And then it says here. Uh, says here uh, uh, the team redesigned the whole editor from the ground up to ensure that it is the user friendly and provides a smoother experience for map makers then it says uh, a key uh, feature 
were enabled with or was missing in the original editor is the display uh, object. Now you can see the whole map and, and how the heroes will navigate around projects. <laughs> then it says uh, the editor uses a new map format FH2M. The license free format is different from the original game. The map format is very stable and we plan to expand in a uh, future release offer a map maker option to find too many uh, uh, objects and add custom event set up unique loss and win condition and more this also means that you can freely share your creations with others and in, in the future we are going to supply the engine with new maps it is uh, important to note that the current version of the editor lacks a, f a few features that was a deliberate decision to balance the release timeline and deliver well-tested and uh, polished codes rather than providing everything in a semi-finished state. Quality has always been our main priority. We will cover the missing features in the next release. Additionally, the team enhanced AI and on the adventure maps, redesigned multiple uh, user interface dialogues and also update several tr trans was this transition uh, translation <laughs> and that is that so uh, yeah uh, you, you can um, you can grab the data from GOG uh, yeah for, uh, for F hero might and magic yeah they're all they're always updating that game by the way but yeah um but back to that licensing thing though now if you do now let's say you have let's say you let's say you have kids let's say you have family and stuff and you die and they know your password to that account they can continue to use it though they can if they want they can long long as they don't mess it long as they don't mess it up you know? <laughs> if they mess it up that's on them they weren't using common sense anyway <laughs> anyway all right here's another one psychic base road light bullet bullet hell Co cosmo rider improved steam deck controls hmm all right Let's see here, uh, Cosmo Trigger, Cosmo Rider is a physics-based roguelike bullet hell haven horde survivor action game. Upgrade your spaceship and traverse uh, procedurally generated galaxies in a space uni uh, survivor game. It has native Linux support, but no Steam Deck rating from Valve yet. But it says recently it had a major upgrade to bring its random bring in randomized weapons attributes and a new reinforced system to help you out which sounds pretty fun that was on top of a graphics upgrade back in april they also recently added in key uh, rebinds along with better decision to steam deck controls and updated tutorials user interface user interface navigation and more and let's see here you can get this game where you can check it out on the steam page yeah <clears throat> And let's see, uh, this game is called uh, Cosmo Rider. Hmm. All right, what else we got for you? <clears throat> you little Steam Deck fans. I think my Steam Deck is connected somewhere somewhere around here. <laughs> it's, 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 in, it's in another room, so yeah. Uh, it gets like that. <laughs> anyway, what else we got? Let's see. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Okay, next thing. What do we got here? Yeah, got to keep you guys up to date, though. Co-op Tower Defense Beat-Em-Up Chrono Dojo adds various Steam Deck improvements. Hmm. See? Updates are rolling in. Remember, on the Steam Deck, you need that 2 terabytes of SSD for all your protons, meaning GE Proton, Proton GE, Proton Hotfix, Proton Experimental, and Proton from Valve. You need it for wine, you need it for the Chai Kai 4 deck, and you need it for um, Steam OS. Yeah, that's what it's for. And you put your games on an SD card. Okay? Yeah. Updates are rolling in. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Mickey, you going here. Says here, uh, what else I got? Let's see what I can do here. Let's see, get this thing done here. Co op tower defense beat em up. Chrono Dojo adds various Steam Deck improvement. Chrono Dojo blends together two games that I think would work putting together tower defense and a beat em up second a beat em up sounds a bit odd but i've but i've seen a lot stranger it reminds me of the classic uh, awesome not a uh, bit 
only co-op tower defense rather than a MOBA. While it has no current official Steam Deck rating from Valve, the developers are clearly fans of Linux-powered handheld. Writing in a post on Steam, they mention, we so, ha we so love playing and developing games for, for and from our couch, so naturally we had to pick up a Steam Deck for ourselves and play Chrono Dojo all over again. We were happy to say that it feels right at home on the deck. Along the way, we noticed many little tweaks, minor issues, and opportunities for improvement. So we base, so we so we bash out this latest build, and are happy to share it with everyone. Looking for a great game for their Steam Deck. Hmm. And what well, says here? Uh, more about it. It plays solo or partly with friends in this cute co-op, uh, cute cooperative combination uh, of tower defense and beat 'em up action. Travel through time, leap through levels quickly construct uh, trusty towers and battle against waves of zany enemies features play as adorable humble heroes custom cook gardener fixer deliverer nurse <laughs> bash baddies building towers battle bosses in three unique time in history accelerate and slow flow of time in each levels to achieve maximum victory unlock an arsenal of stylish uh, shoes wacky weapons powerful pets beverage boost <laughs> and it says leverage like hearted and fast paced turn for all ages and skill levels keyboard support for one player controller support for for four players at least one controller requires for local multiplayer and it says available on steam page yeah and this game is called uh, uh, Chrono Dojo. Okay, all right. Now, what's another game here? Let's see. Anything else on the Steam Deck? French. Let's see what else we got here. Mm. Yeah. Steam Deck is always getting updates. Updates are rolling in. Yeah. And it says here. Uh, Mango HUD performance monitor you can put on the top of a game on Linux has a brand new release available with features and fixes. This is the tech that powers the performance overlay on Steam Deck. So with this you can get uh, a readout of GPU and CPU use, RAM and VRAM use, FPS frame, timing and so much more. It's incredibly useful for tracking game performance across various settings one of those now essential tools and got a little update here too time now has a has a label wayland uh, keybind has been added rewritten exec functions to have persistent shell should reduce frame time spikes while using exec exec is now right aligned to confirm every other items uh, mason options with underscore XX11 and with Wayland actually have a purpose now. Adds a pop OS, Steam OS to build a script. Add a mutex to config prevent some crashes when accessing config at the same time or reloading. Wine sync and refresh rate has been changed to small fonts. Adds more stats to the log summary. Stop using Intel GPU. Uh, top as it was causing too many issues we can still get GPU load but the rest will have to wait for expo expose in system FS and says here uh, frame color wasn't and this is the fixes frame color wasn't uh, correctly inherited the user was not able to change its color Fix a crash when pressing Shift R plus F9. Config option now currently override preset option. Fix RPMs and percent being incorrectly assigned for GPU for fan speed. Graph adds incorrect padding at start of graphs. Fix a crash when reload the config while uh, logging and check that GPU input gives non-zero value. Fix Minecraft launcher crashing 
graph adds incorrect padding leading to a smaller graph fix a bill in use where some uh, mason uh, option would exclude old ping uh, files incorrectly fix preset not working with uh, mango hud config env and then it says uh, time no then it says parameters time no label remove the label before time network shows thorough put uh, in KB slash S for all interface or a specific list of interface EG and then network uh, equal ETH0 and W see L01 and this is for Mango HUD performance monitor version 0.7.2 out now yeah Linux is always getting updates man <laughs> always so yeah like when it comes to that Steam Deck, man. Hmm. Yeah, let me see what else we got here. Oh, we got got two more pieces of news here, and then we're done. Let's see here. What else we got? Um, when it comes to the Linux and Steam Deck, man, updates are always rolling in. Inspired by Immersed RPG from the 90s, Sonar Shock looks great. Hmm. System Shock Sonar Shock. All right. Sonar Shock looks a bit System Shock-like. That's a great thing. As it was inspired by various immersive RPG from the 90s, we have no shortage of excellent games arrived this year, and so Sonar Shock looks like another you don't want to miss, and it was native Linux support too. Uh, a Soviet dream turned nightmare, explore the now empty halls of the Soviet super submarine and discover what caused its supernatural downfall. <laughs> so basically you're on a submarine alone. Yeah, it says expect some quirky controls with this one, and it really does mechanically resemble the older games. And what it says here uh, features uh, spongy PSI soldier, agile special weapons experts, hacking uh, savvy gunslinger, build your own characters in this first person dungeon crawler inspired by immersive RPG from the 90s. Immerse yourself in dark corners of the S1 Utopia, a Soviet super weapon, and scour its four, four floors to for, uh, f uh, floors for power weapons like flamethrowers, harpoon guns, and automatic pistols. Reveal what caused the supernatural infestation on board the, fifth, the S, S1 fifth Utopia. Argue gossip uh, barter with a cast of alcoholic sailors <laughs> alcoholic sailors to learn more about their subnautic uh, secrets embark on treacherous side quests solve criminal cause together with detective Sherlock Holmes <laughs> discover hidden treasures or fight through the crypt of a haunted uh, cathedral uh, sonar shock is full of secrets bookshelves uh, slides to the side and vent harbor strange treasures step into the survival horror manager ever dwindling ammo supply and your sanity as you try to keep El eldritch horror at bay fight an enemy ra uh, raster inspired by hp lovecraft and slavic for folklore enjoy the privilege of being eaten by a <laughs> uh, Shogun uh, of our haunted uh, Rusa, Ru, was it Rus, Rusel, Rusalka? <laughs> Available on Steam. <laughs> yeah, you guys got your hands full with this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, what's this called? Sonar Shock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you got your hands full. Yeah, have fun with that one. <laughs> anyway, let's see what else we got. What else we got? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> On a submarine? <laughs> yeah. See, Terraria board game live Kickstarter goals met almost instantly. Mm. Says Terraria, the small hit indie game being turned into a tabletop experience with Terraria, the board game. It's crowdfunded on Kickstarter. Obviously, it was going, it was going to do well. Their goal was also met. Instantly, at the time of writing, the main goal is 19,850, and they have 223,000 
697 pledge. So yeah, clearly a lot of people are wanting in on this one and who could could blame them? It looks great. Official official tool, of course, made by Paper Fort Games in collaboration with Relogic with the adaptation it will be playable for one to four players. Solo play is an option with with worlds exploration co-op play dice based combat deck building little miniature for our bosses you can paint too mm. and he says check out the kickstarter page and yeah mm. their goal was ninth was almost twenty thousand but they got two hundred and twenty three thousand six hundred and um ninety seven <laughs> well it's not like Star 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 Citizen. Star Citizen got seven hundred million. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, act nicely and you shall receive, man. If I start a Kickstarter, I'm wondering how much, <laughs> I wonder how much I can get. Anyway. Anyway, what's we got? Uh let's see. Voxel Libre formerly Mind Clone 2 version 087 release. Moving away from Minecraft. Mm. Okay. It says here Voxel Libre, uh, formerly Mind Clone 2, a free open source sandbox, has a brand new release available as they begin more movement to end the Minecraft Clone Wars. Well, as much as they can anyway, because it still looks and acts like Minecraft and is one of the best free alternative. Not only is this the first relief with a new name, but it's also plenty of new mechanics. And some new uh, mobiles too. <laughs> Says here uh, some of the highlights uh, release a rewrite, a rewrite of portion and effect system. This includes new effects, new portion and brewing recipes being added. Rewritten ne uh, neither portals, making them work better. And now they connect up properly. Improvements to the mob spawning system. New mobs. Rover is a new mob replacing the Enderman. Stalker is all is another new mob replacing the Creeper. Eating is now delayed instead of instant and is in a first person animation. Multiple new blocks uh, capes are included in the character cust customization. Cherry blossom uh, part par parties. Leather armor can be now colored and washed. And sign text editing, much, much more. This sounds like a pretty exciting release for the project. Have many of you been playing it? What are your thoughts? Mind, mind clone. Hmm. Mind clone, Minecraft. Yeah, well, if they're moving away from it, well, pro pro probably a good decision. You know, don't want to get into a conf. Not saying you can't make another version of Minecraft. You can't, but. You know, they probably did it because they didn't want to get into no conflicts with anybody. So, probably good good decision on them. Uh oh, here's another one. Got one more piece of news too, and then we're done. <laughs> Majora's Mask. Oh boy. Mm. You better hope Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo don't like people messing with their stuff, man. So, people should know by now. Uh, let's see here. What are they talking about? Hmm. Star Citizen. Seven hundred million. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, says here, uh, Zelda recompiled the Majora's Mask PC port version 1, 1 brings various upgrades. The Zelda recompile was pretty in interesting news recently. A PC port of Nintendo's Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask using the new N64 recompile tool and now a fresh update is out to improve it. It's further. It was already impressive and now even more so. It's only going to keep getting better thanks to its being open source. Linux players especially might want this one due to the SDL crash fix. As a reminder, you do need a copy of the game to work with Zelda 64 recompiled since it does not provide that for you. And then it says, uh, what did they add now? Hmm. It says here, uh, version 1.10 brings added an analog free camera install of later entries in the series, moving right click will allow you freely rotate the camera and uh, pressing the target button or going through an entrance will switch back 
to normal camera. Improve motion blur effects at high frame by using high precision internal frame buffer. Won't be enabled on machine with less than one gig of video RAM. Implement an N64 noise ditter affects the motion blur cutscenes. Extend extended dawn of X, X day screen to account for faster load times to match console timing. Added configurable scales dead zone option to the menus. Add the option to remap the menu button on the controller. Add an automatic uh, save backup system to reduce chance of losing data of saving getting interrupted. Fix a Linux crash and start up by forcing SDL2 video uh, driver selection to X11. Fix the Skull Kid curse affecting wine aspect ratio. Add main volume slider. And then it says see, see more on the GitHub page. This isn't the only PC port as we also just add two ships to Arcanian release as well. <laughs> yeah. And this is the Zelda 64 recompiled uh, 1.10 analog camera and more. This is for uh, Majora's Mask. Yeah. It's an open source project. <laughs> but, but we all know that Majora's Mask start, started where? On the Nintendo 64. So. Let's hope they don't run into no conflict with with Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, because Nintendo been getting some heat for what they what they've been doing. <laughs> so, so yeah, <clears throat> trying to go at the modding community. <laughs> anyway, or emulation community. Anyway, ah, uh, all right. Now, one more, one more game, one more game. All right. Now, <laughs> says your uh, knee dual backpack. Wow. Knee Dual Backpack Monster blends an inventory PvP auto battler with monster fusing twister. Inventory management games are becoming another popular thing at the moment. We had also those survivor like Bullet Haven games. Now another game engineer is springing to life. Ne Neo Dual, a backpack monster, looks like a sweet high spin off, looks like a sweet spin on the idea backpack battles that released back in March is a current favorite of mine but Neo Duel backpack monster bring with it a nice twist with you stuffing monsters into your backpack it's all about getting the best combo you can while battling other players and fusing these creatures together to make a more powerful one mm. and this says more about it a multiplayer monster trainer uh, theme and inventory manager an auto battler choose your monsters place and combine them create uh, synergies and beat your opponent after a little after every battle choose new monsters for your team try to create the ultimate combo neo dual backpack monster is in a synchronous multiplayer game meaning that time is on your side need a break go ahead and take a sip of coffee for us your progress will be here you you return your opponent will be ready and waiting use your crystal to evolve your monsters to their stronger form and fuse different monsters to discover unique creation from your uh, humble family street to the uh, stadium of monster battling win against other players to aspire neo duel will include rank and feature designs for competitive play use unique modification and upgrades to alter your playable maximize potential of your team explore different tactics to discover strong synergies it says the demo seems to work just great on kbuntu linux nice to see it releases in the third quarter 2024 demo is on steam so uh there <laughs> that's all the news i got to report on the steam deck so uh you steam deck fans you're good. <laughs> uh, news, deals, games, update. Yeah, every day. Anyway, yeah, I got it done. So I got one video already done plus this one. So this one was pretty long, a little longer, <laughs> almost 35 minutes. But anyway, got it, got it done, got it done, got it done though. Um, but uh, with these Kickstarters, man, um, you know, people are getting so. You know, these developers are getting support for their projects. So, 
Um, you know, Star Citizen is a, is a big example of that. So yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but other than that, man, um, you Steam Deck fans, Linux gamers, you are good. You got your news, you got your deals, you got your updates. The usual. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Nice talking to you people again. Chris, still Star Wars, Star Trek, Dark Sector. Go. Peace.